The state of flow is important, not only because it allows us to enjoy the present, but also because it strengthens our self-confidence, which motivates us to learn new skills and make achievements for the benefit of humanity. Author, Michaly Sixent Mihaly. Flow, Psychology of Optimal Experience. Summary of the book. A new look at happiness. Even 2,300 years ago, the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle came to the conclusion that more than anything else in the world, a person wants happiness, but we still do not know what happiness is and how to achieve it. This book is about how to learn to be happy no matter what happens in the outside world and learn to achieve maximum productivity, high motivation, and freedom. It is important to understand that happiness is not the result of luck or chance. It cannot be bought with money or achieved by force. It depends not on the events happening around us, but on our interpretation of them. Happiness is a state that everyone should cultivate and keep within themselves. People who have learned to control their experiences will be able to influence the quality of their lives. This is the only way each of us can get closer to being happy. Happiness cannot be achieved by consciously setting such a goal. We find happiness only by being completely immersed in the little things that make up our lives. Our perception of life is the result of various forces that give shape to our experiences. In those rare moments when we felt control over our actions, mastery over our own destiny, we feel inspired, especially joyful. These feelings remain in our hearts for a long time and serve as a guide in life. This is the optimal experience, and it is closest to what we usually call happiness, having achieved control over one's mental energy, spending it on fulfilling consciously chosen goals, a person becomes a more complex, more multifaceted personality. Improving his skills and challenging himself to increasingly complex tasks, he continuously develops and feels happy. Why are we helpless in the face of chaos that prevents happiness? Firstly, wisdom cannot be presented in the form of a formula and systematically applied. Each individual must go through this path independently. It's not enough to just know how to do it. You have to be intentional about doing it, like athletes and musicians constantly practicing what they've learned in theory. Secondly, knowing how to control your mind varies from era to era. For example, the spiritual practices of yoga and Zen Buddhism were once the highest achievements, but transferred to modern times, they have lost some of their power. A person can make himself happy or unhappy, regardless of what is actually happening outside, simply by changing the content of his consciousness. Information appears in our consciousness because we deliberately concentrate on it. The most important tool in improving the quality of our experience is attention. It is this that selects meaningful information from the great variety of available information. Without it, no work is possible. And how we spend our attention, what thoughts, feelings, memories we let into our consciousness, determines our personal development. Optimal Experience Whenever incoming information disrupts the order of our consciousness, we find ourselves in a state of internal disorder. The opposite of this state of mental disorder is optimal experience. If the information entering our consciousness is in accordance with our goals, psychic energy flows without any obstacles. If we think for a second about the correctness of our behavior, the answer comes immediately. Everything is going as it should. The ability to feel the correctness of actions strengthens us, and we can pay more attention to solving external and internal problems. Optimal experience is achieved in situations where the individual can freely direct attention to achieving his goals because he does not have to deal with internal turmoil or defend against any threats. We call this state a state of flow because at these moments 
It is as if we are floating with the flow. We are carried by the stream. The state of flow is the opposite of mental turmoil, and those who are able to experience it have greater strength and self-confidence because they can devote more mental energy to achieving their goals. If a person is able to organize his consciousness so that the state of flow occurs as often as possible, the quality of his life will inevitably begin to improve because even the most boring activities will take on meaning. Anyone who has experienced the flow state knows that the greatest joy it brings is achieved through intense self-discipline and concentration complication and growth of personality. As a result of experience in flow, our personality becomes unique because overcoming obstacles inevitably makes a person more capable, more skillful. If we have chosen a goal and concentrated all our mental energy on it, everything we do will bring us joy. The state of flow is important not only because it allows us to enjoy the present, but also because it strengthens our self-confidence, which motivates us to learn new skills and make achievements for the benefit of humanity. Joy and quality of life. There are two main strategies to improve quality of life. We can try to adjust external conditions to our goals, or we can change our perception of external conditions so that they better suit our goals. For example, we can increase our sense of security by purchasing a gun and installing a secure lock on our front door, or we can accept that some risk is inevitable and enjoy an uncertain world without letting thoughts of potential threats poison our well-being. None of these strategies will be effective if used alone. Nevertheless, people continue to believe that the solution to the problem can be found simply by changing external circumstances. Wealth, power, Position in society have become generally accepted symbols of happiness in our culture, and it seems to us that we will achieve happiness as soon as we become the owners of such symbols. Of course, fame, money, or physical health can brighten life, but only if all this is harmoniously included in the already existing positive picture of the world. Pleasure and Experiences of Joy Although pleasure is an important component of quality of life, it does not in itself bring happiness. Pleasure helps maintain order, but by itself it cannot create it. That is, transfer consciousness to a new level, there are more important experiences experiences of joy. They are characterized by forward movement, a sense of novelty, and a sense of achievement. Joy comes from, for example, a vigorous game of tennis or reading a book that offers an unexpected perspective on things, or a conversation in which we suddenly express new ideas. After a joyful event, we feel that we have changed, that our self has grown and become more complex. A person can experience pleasure without any effort, but it is impossible to experience the joy of playing tennis, reading a book, or talking unless one concentrates one's full attention on that activity. This is why joy is so fleeting, and for the same reason, pleasure does not lead to personal growth. To gain control over the quality of your life, you need to learn to extract joy from everyday activities. Complex activity requiring skill. The most frequently cited activities that bring joy are reading and socializing. At first glance, it may seem that the second is an exception to the rule, since it does not require any special skills, but any shy person will tell you that this is not so. Any activity offers a person many opportunities for action and poses a unique challenge to his skills and abilities. Optimal experiences are not only achieved through leisure activities. Mowing the lawn or waiting in the dentist's office can also bring joy if you restructure your activities with goals and rules that promote a state of flow. The main thing is to remember that no matter what the subject does, his abilities must correspond to the complexity of the task facing him. Merging action and awareness. Concentration. An optimal experience 
A person is so immersed in a task that his activities become almost automatic, and he ceases to be aware of himself as separate from the actions he performs. Although flow states seem spontaneous and effortless, they actually often involve great physical effort or intense mental concentration. The slightest weakening of concentration destroys it. But while it lasts, consciousness functions smoothly. Actions follow one after another. In a state of flow, there is no need to react and analyze because the action, as if by magic, carries us forward. In everyday life, we often become victims of unpleasant thoughts and worries that unbiddenly invade our consciousness. This is why a state of flow improves the quality of life. Focus, coupled with clear goals and immediate feedback, brings order to the mind and conquers mental clutter. In addition, when a person is truly absorbed in his activity, he does not have free time to analyze any stimuli that are not relevant at the moment. Having clear goals and feedback is important to the state of flow. So until a person learns to set goals and receive feedback, he will not be able to derive joy from his activities. The most important property of optimal experience is its self-sufficiency. In other words, its main goal lies in itself. The optimal experience is very different from the experiences we typically experience in everyday life. Unfortunately, much of what we do has no value in itself. People often feel that time spent at work is wasted, and some are unable to find joy even in their free time. Leisure provides an opportunity to take a break from work, but it is typically a passive absorption of information and does not allow the use of any skills or the exploration of new opportunities. Optimal experience raises the personality to a qualitatively different level. Boredom is replaced by joy. Helplessness turns into a feeling of personal strength. Mental energy is no longer wasted on external goals, but helps strengthen ourself. The sensations experienced by a person in a state of flow are so strong and beneficial that he returns to this activity again and again not stopping at possible difficulties and dangers and with little interest in what he will get in the end. Sometimes this state occurs as a result of favorable circumstances, but in most cases it is the result of engaging in structured activities or the individual's ability to induce a state of flow, and often both. The main point of flow activity is to find joy Flow sensations seem to transfer a person into a new reality that has not yet been explored by him, expanding the horizons of his abilities. In other words, they change the personality, making it more complex. Personal development holds the key to understanding the meaning of flow activity. There are people who, due to the functioning of their psyche, are not capable of experiencing flow. For example, a person who is constantly worried about what others will think of him, afraid of making a bad impression or doing something wrong, is deprived of the ability to feel the joy of being. The same applies to those people who consider everything from the point of view of their personal interests. Both extremes do not allow a person to control his attention. Because of this, he cannot enjoy his activities and loses opportunities for personal growth. The Role of the Family in the Development of a Self-Sufficient Personality A family situation that stimulates the development of the ability to achieve a state of flow has five characteristics. 1. Clarity in Relationships 2. Parents' interest in what their child is thinking and feeling at the moment rather than concern about which college he will go to or whether he will be able to get a well-paid job. 3. Giving children the opportunity to choose. 4. A sense of community, trust between family members, allowing a teenager to put aside psychological defenses and immerse himself in activities that interest him. 5. Setting worthy tasks for children, that is, 
creating opportunities for their improvement. The presence of all the above characteristics creates a so-called self-sufficient family context, which best develops the ability to enjoy life. Flow People the character traits characteristic of self-sufficient individuals are most clearly manifested when people find themselves in difficult living conditions. Lost in the ice of the Antarctic or sitting in a solitary confinement cell, they turn the bleak reality around them into a field of vigorous activity and struggle that brings joy. According to research, such people survive because they can turn objectively dangerous and oppressive circumstances into a field of exploration and behave as if they are in a state of flow. They scrutinize the smallest details of their environment to discover hidden opportunities for action, set achievable goals and carefully monitor their progress, then raise the stakes to make things more difficult for themselves. When they are threatened by hostile circumstances, they regain a sense of control over the situation by finding a new direction for their psychic energy. Alexander Solzhenitsyn, recalling the time of his imprisonment in Lefortovo prison, told how one of his cellmates, having drawn a map of the world on the prison floor, made an imaginary journey through Asia and Europe to America, walking several kilometers a day. Similar, Games were invented by prisoners at all times. All these people have one thing in common, the presence of an important goal that stands above personal interests. With enough free mental energy to analyze a situation objectively, they are more likely to discover new opportunities for action. Probably, it is this trait that is key in the structure of the personality, the goals of which are located in itself. One of the greatest philosophers of our time, Bertrand Russell, described his path to happiness this way. Gradually, I learned to be indifferent to myself and my shortcomings. My attention became increasingly focused on external objects, world events, various fields of knowledge, people to whom I felt affection. It is perhaps difficult to find a more succinct description of how you can become a self-sufficient person. Body, Consciousness and Flow If you learn to control the abilities of your body and organize physical sensations, mental disorder in your consciousness will give way to joyful harmony. But the body does not create a state of flow through movement alone. The participation of consciousness is always necessary. Even the simplest form of physical activity, such as walking, can be turned into a complex flow activity, almost an art, because walking can have a great variety of purposes. Greater joy can also be felt when simply talking with friends, working in the garden, or doing some other favorite activity. All these types of activities do not require special material costs, but mental energy must be invested in them, so they bring us a feeling of harmony while activities that require external resources often involve attention to a lesser extent and therefore do not bring such satisfaction. Sex is like a flow. When people think of joy, sex is usually the first thing that comes to mind. But the same sexual act can cause feelings of pain, resentment, bitterness, or fear. It can be perceived neutrally. It can make one feel joy or ecstasy, depending on how it relates to the goals of the individual. Essentially, to enjoy sex you just need to want it and be physically healthy. But if you don't transform sex into a joyful activity, it will quickly become boring, a meaningless ritual or an addiction. One of the forms of sexuality development is mastering the technique of sex. It is also important that in addition to his own pleasure and enjoyment of the process, the lover feels genuine care for his partner. Relationships in a couple, in order to bring joy, must become more and more complex. Partners must learn to find new opportunities in themselves and in each other. Sexuality, like every other aspect of being human, is a joy if we are willing to take control 
and complicated. Flow through sensations. Vision is most often used as a remote sensory system. The ability to see, however, can also provide us with a constant experience of joy. One of the best ways to develop perceptual skills is through the visual arts. The same can be said about music. It helps to organize the mind of the listener and thereby reduces mental clutter. Music can not only relieve us of boredom and anxiety, but if taken seriously, it can create flow experiences. Food, like sex, is one of the fundamental pleasures inherent in our nervous system. But many people still barely notice what they put into their mouths, thereby missing out on a rich source of joy. To transform a biological need into a flow experience, we need to pay attention to what we eat. Developing good taste in food, like any other skill, requires an investment of mental energy. But this energy investment will return to you a hundredfold in the form of more complex, multifaceted sensations. Stream of Thought Alone, without the need to concentrate, we find that the mind begins to descend into chaos. If a person does not know how to voluntarily organize his consciousness, attention will inevitably stop on some problem that is tormenting him. To avoid this, people strive to occupy their minds with any available information, as long as it distracts their attention from turning inward and fixating on unpleasant thoughts. This is why a huge amount of time is spent in front of the TV, although this activity rarely brings joy. A much better way to deal with chaos in the mind is to independently control your mental processes. One of the simplest ways to structure consciousness is dreams and fantasies in the form of replaying some sequence of events in the mind. They help to find the optimal strategy of behavior and see new alternatives. This in turn helps increase the complexity of consciousness. Also among the many intellectual activities, the most frequently mentioned flow activities are reading and solving intellectual riddles. Development of Intelligence All forms of mental flow activity depend directly or indirectly on memory. A person who can remember stories, poems, song lyrics, baseball scores, chemical formulas, historical dates, and wise aphorisms has many advantages over someone who is unable to develop such a skill. He can always find a meaningful reason for joy in the contents of his memory. In addition, he is always a welcome interlocutor, since he can share the information stored in his mind and thereby help the one with whom he communicates to organize his consciousness. The most natural way to develop your memory is to choose an area that really interests you and start paying attention to key facts and figures. It is up to you to decide what will be stored in your memory, then you will control the information, and the whole process of memorizing will not be an imposed routine, but a pleasant experience. A play on words. A rich vocabulary and fluency of speech are considered among the most important qualities of a business person. The ability to speak enriches interactions. The now almost lost art of conversation holds possibilities for improving the quality of life, and anyone can learn it. The main creative use of language is poetry. It allows the mind to store experiences in a modified and concentrated form, and is therefore ideal for organizing consciousness. Writing prose has the same advantages. Friendship with history. One of the most enjoyable ways to organize your mind and bring joy is to collect, record, and store information about a variety of great and small events. Having an organized record of the past can improve our quality of life. The simplest thing is to start by keeping a personal diary. Once a person takes the trouble to figure out which aspects of the past are of interest to him and decides to explore them more deeply, Focusing on the details 
the study of history turns into an inexhaustible source of flow experiences. The Joys of Science Today's science is like an expensive conveyor belt for the production of knowledge. But discoveries are still often made by people who are simply sitting on a bench near the market, lost in their own thoughts and not noticing anything around them. It is important to remember that many great scientists did not pursue science for government grants or fame, but because they found joy in working with the methods they invented. The thought process that makes science attractive is accessible to everyone. It's worth doing it primarily because it's a great way to bring order to your mind. Work like a flow. Work has a huge impact on your overall life satisfaction. If a person experiences a state of flow at work, they are more likely to be able to improve their overall quality of life. Free labor, requiring skill, contributes to the complexity of the personality, while unskilled work performed under coercion only increases internal mental disorder. In order to avoid the latter, you need to focus your attention on the opportunities for action offered by the environment and enrich the content of your work. Another approach is to change the work itself so that it promotes a state of flow. The more the work resembles a team game, the more joy the person doing it will experience, regardless of his level of development. To improve your quality of life through work, you need to redesign your activities to be as stream-like as possible and hone your craft by setting achievable goals. This can greatly increase the number of optimal experiences in our lives. Although people often want to finish work quickly and go home, they often have no idea how to spend their free time. Instead of using our physical and mental resources to enter a state of flow, most of us spend many hours in front of the TV watching actors and athletes. Meanwhile, mass culture and mass art absorb a huge amount of our psychic energy, giving nothing in return, leaving us even more devastated than before. Until a person takes responsibility for organizing both his work and free time, both will bring him disappointment. The joy of communicating with herself and with others. Another factor influencing quality of life is relationships with other people. If we learn to transform them into flow experiences, our overall quality of life will improve significantly but we also value privacy and often want to be alone with ourselves. At the same time, it often turns out that as soon as this desire comes true, we plunge into despondency, feel abandoned and begin to suffer because there is nothing to do. The fear of being alone is one of the most powerful human fears. It is important to realize that until a person learns to tolerate loneliness and even enjoy it, it will be very difficult for him to solve problems that require full concentration. However, the most painful events tend to also be related to relationships, like everything that truly matters. Relationships can make us happy if we live in harmony with others. But if conflicts arise, we become unhappy. Anyone who learns to get along well with others will undoubtedly experience a significant improvement in their overall quality of life. The pain of loneliness. Nothing spoils the mood more than being alone when there is nothing to do. In this state, it is very difficult to maintain order in the mind. When no stimuli comes from outside, attention begins to wander and chaos reigns in our thoughts, as a result of which we plunge into a state of mental entropy. Worries about personal life, health, family, and work are constantly present on the periphery of consciousness, waiting for the moment when there is nothing to concentrate on. Once your mind relaxes, potential problems are right there. It is for this reason that television has turned out to be a blessing for so many people. The flickering of the screen brings some order to the mind, and the information does not allow unpleasant thoughts to enter the mind. The possibility of development which allows one to simultaneously enjoy life 
is to create order of a higher level out of mental disorder, which is an inevitable condition of existence. This means that every new challenge that life throws at us should not be perceived as something that must be avoided at all costs, but as an opportunity for learning and self-improvement. Only those who can find a way to organize their attention and prevent internal turmoil from destroying their mind can survive alone. A person can engage in flow activities in almost any environment, but until he learns to enjoy solitude, a significant part of his psychic energy will be spent on hopeless attempts to avoid it. The Joy of Friendship Friendship brings us joy, and this requires all the same conditions that are present in other stream activities. It is necessary not only to have common goals and give each other feedback, but also to solve new problems in interaction with another person. They may simply involve learning more about your friend, discovering new facets of his personality, and in the process, learning more about himself. Friendship brings joy only if we use the opportunities for self-expression inherent in it. If a person surrounds himself with friends who simply reinforce his social status without being interested in his true thoughts and dreams and without inspiring him to do new things, he deprives himself of the fullness of the feelings of true friendship. Friendships rarely last on their own. They need to be nurtured and worked on just as hard as your career or family life. Fighting Stress A catastrophe that prevents the achievement of the main goal in life can crush a person, forcing him to direct all his mental energy to protecting his remaining goals from further blows of fate. But it can also set a new, clearer goal to overcome misfortune. If a person chooses the second path, his quality of life will not necessarily suffer as a result of the tragedy. An event that seems catastrophic can enrich the lives of those affected in unexpected ways. There are two main ways to respond to stress, mature defense, and neurotic immature defense. Let's say you are fired from your job. You may withdraw into yourself, start waking up late, deny the event that happened and avoid thinking about it. You may also try to take out negative emotions on family and friends, or drown your frustrations in alcohol. All of these actions will be examples of immature defense. Another response is to temporarily suppress your anger and fear, analyze the situation logically, and reframe the problem so that it is easier to solve. For example, you will find a job where your skills are more in demand, or you will learn something else. In this case, you will resort to mature defense. The ability to find something positive in adversity is a rare gift. Those who possess it are called survivors. They are also said to have steadfastness or courage. It is not surprising that people value this ability over other virtues because it promotes survival and helps improve quality of life. Those who know how to transform a hopeless situation into new, controllable flow activities experience challenges with joy and emerge stronger. Such a transformation involves three main steps. 1. Unselfish self-confidence. A person feels himself a part of what is happening around him and tries to do everything possible within the framework of the system in which he must act. If your car won't start, no matter how much you yell at it, nothing will change. A smarter approach is to admit the obvious. The car doesn't care that you urgently need to go to an important meeting. Either call a taxi or cancel things. 2. Focusing attention on the outside world. By paying attention to what is happening around us, we reduce the destructive effects of stress. A person who pays attention to the world around him becomes part of it, integrates into the system, connecting himself with it through psychic energy. This, in turn, allows him to better understand the properties of the system and find better ways to adapt to a stressful situation. If you stay in touch with what is happening, 
you can see new opportunities that will allow you to respond truly effectively. 3. Discovery of new solutions. You can focus on obstacles and eliminate them. This approach is called direct. The second way involves concentration on the situation as a whole, thinking about whether it is possible to put other more appropriate goals and find new solutions. If you were fired, you can go prove to your boss that he is wrong or find something else to do department. There are opportunities for growth in almost every situation. But for in order for such a transformation to become possible, a person must be ready for perception of unexpected opportunities. Self-sufficient person. A healthy, rich and powerful person has no advantage over a sick, poor and weak person when it comes to establishing control over consciousness. A self-sufficient person is distinguished by the ability to easily turn potential threats into tasks, the solution of which brings joy and maintains internal harmony. This is a person who never experiences boredom, rarely worries, is involved in what is happening and experiences a state of flow most of the time. The main goals of a self-sufficient personality are formed in her consciousness in the process of evaluating experiences, that is, they are created by herself. The rules by which you can develop the qualities of such a personality are simple and directly related to the flow model. Briefly, they look like this. 1. Set goals and pay attention to the results of your actions. 2. Be completely immersed in the activity. 3. Pay attention to what is happening around you. 4. Learn to enjoy momentary experiences. Creating meaning. The ability to experience a state of flow in one area does not mean that a person will be able to achieve it always and in everything. Until the activities and hobbies that bring us satisfaction are connected together by a higher meaning, we are not protected from the invasion of chaos. In order not to lose the ability to have optimal experiences, a person needs to take one more, final step in establishing control over consciousness. This step involves turning your entire life into one flow experience if a person sets himself a sufficiently complex goal from which all other goals follow logically, and if he directs all his energy to developing the skills necessary to achieve this goal, then feelings and actions will come into a state of harmony and the disparate parts of life will come together. Everything that such a person does has meaning in the present and is connected with the past and future. This is how you can give meaning to your entire life. Developing Determination Any goal must be taken seriously, and any task requires certain actions. There is a relationship between the value of a goal and the effort required to achieve it. Fulfilling a goal requires a lot of effort, but it is this effort that gives meaning to achieving the goal. Self-knowledge is a way by which a person can organize his goals. Internal conflict arises because there are too many conflicting desires and goals competing for psychic energy. The only way to overcome the psychological conflict between different goals competing for a person's attention is to separate important goals from unimportant ones and build a hierarchy of priorities between them. Before investing a significant amount of mental energy into one goal or another, it is worth answering the questions do I really want to do this? Does this bring me joy? Will I enjoy it in the future? Is this case worth the price that will have to be paid? If an individual has not bothered to figure out what he really wants, and his attention is so absorbed in external goals that he does not notice his own feelings, he will not be able to meaningfully plan his actions. Return of Harmony the essence of the strategy through which you can find the meaning of existence 
is to look for ways to organize your consciousness in the experience accumulated by past generations. Culture has accumulated enormous knowledge, ready for use, and it is available to anyone who wants to create harmony out of chaos. However, most people ignore these achievements, although to do so is the same as rebuilding the entire edifice of human culture with each generation. No person in his right mind would want to reinvent the wheel, fire, electricity, and a million other objects that we gain knowledge about through learning. In the same way, disregard for the information accumulated by our ancestors and the desire to independently discover worthy life goals is a manifestation of blind arrogance. The chances of success in such an undertaking are about the same as trying to build an electron microscope without tools or knowledge of physics. If we better understand why we are the way we are, and understand the origins of instinctual drives, social stereotypes, cultural differences in short, all those factors that influence the formation of consciousness, it will be easier for us to direct our energy where it should be. Most people who discover complex life topics recall admiring a person or historical figure who served as a role model for them. Some saw new possibilities for action in the book that delighted them. The best works of literature provide many examples of lives built on the pursuit of a worthy and meaningful goal. Many who have faced questions about the meaning of existence have regained hope after learning that others before them have tried to solve the same problems and were able to do so. Having learned to separate ourselves from others, we must learn to accept the world as it is without losing our hard-won individuality. We must believe that the universe is a system governed by general laws with which we will have to reconcile our dreams and desires. Once we accept that we need to collaborate with the world around us, rather than control it, we are likely to experience the relief familiar to an exile returning home. The problem of the meaning of life will be solved when our personal goals merge with the flow of existence. 10 Best Thoughts 1. Happiness is the ability to keep your experiences under control. 2. A self-sufficient person knows how to find meaning in life and activity, is decisive and harmonious. 3. Flow is the opposite of inner disorder. In a state of flow, we become completely absorbed in the activity, enjoy it, gain self-confidence, and the ability to reach new heights. 4. Pleasure does not bring happiness, but it helps to find inner order. 5. Happiness is impossible without a clear goal and feedback. 6. A person's activities must correspond to his abilities. Mere activity does not bring happiness. 7. Biological needs food. Sex can be turned into flow experiences if you take control of them and complicate them. 8. People with high intelligence are happier than those who are not very intelligent. Develop your memory. Read, improve your speech, do science, study history, and become happier. 9. Work helps us become happier. You just need to not wait for the end of the working day, but hone your skills by setting achievable goals. 10. Communication is important for happiness, but until a person learns to tolerate loneliness and enjoy it, it will be very difficult for him to solve problems that require full concentration. Dear friends, I hope listening to this wonderful work gives you pleasure and is useful. Read more, friends. It is difficult to overestimate the benefits of reading. After all, when reading each book, you communicate with the author and receive information that he has accumulated throughout his life. Thank you.